What's going on Babylonians? It's me Songs of Rays and I'm back on the channel bringing some guides your way. Now today we're going to be discussing a brand new genre, one that we haven't done on this channel as of yet, and that's going to be one that I hold very dear to my heart. And this is going to be the RTS genre because back when I was a little Songs of Rays, my dad introduced to me the one, one of my favourite franchises of all time and that is going to be Command and Conquer. There was just something about it in terms of like base building, there were so many different ways you could play. Obviously some of those were a little bit more effective than others, but I just really enjoyed the, the idea of being able to have a base that I can look after, I can then assemble a force, I can send that force out and just go dominate the battlefield. Now of course I have played every single one of those Commander Conquers, yes, unfortunately including Commander Conquer 4, but it is still one of my most favourite genres that I have ever played in all of my gaming history, and I've been looking forward to a brand new RTS to start rivaling it, something I can get my teeth into, something that has some active servers. Well that's where Tempest Rising comes in and that's where the gameplay you're going to see in the background because Tempest Rising at the THQ showcase managed to drop a demo for level for us and it allows us to get to grips with how the game is going to perform, how it's all going to play out and it gives us a little bit of a sneak peek as to what is actually so special about Tempest Rising that's going to be doing it different to Command Conquer. So if you're an RTS fan just like ourselves, then make sure to drop that like and subscribe so you can find your way back to the channel. We will be doing some kind of content on this, most notably going to be guides, explaining how some of the units perform, what's the best way to be able to get some of the, like, the most out of those units as well, so you get the best cost for your bang for your buck. But anyway, this video is going to be showcasing off the demo, it's going to be having the footage rolling in the background, and we're going to be talking about a few things that we have noticed from being able to play this game, giving us a small peek into what we're going to expect for full launch. So if that interests you, make sure to stick around, but let's get ready, let's dive into the game. So right off the bat, we will have an airdrop of four units where as soon as you start the demo, and these are all going to be treated as field scouts. Now the field scouts are the closest comparison we're going to have from previous games, like for example Command Conquer, which there will be a lot of comparisons back to that game, just purely because that's my main point of reference. Uh, these are going to be like your standard infantry or your minigunners from those games, and they are just there just to like standard kind of uh, like cheapest units to be able to produce that will still be able to do some damage. Uh, they're really good at taking out infantry, but when it comes to like vehicles, when it comes to taking out aircraft and all that kind of thing they're just not very good so when it comes to that it's just purely they are there for numbers they're there for like just standard kind of engagements like early on and then after that you'll probably look into the tech tree to be able to buy something a little bit better what I really enjoy about this game straight off the bat is that if you do go through the item card on the bottom left, once you select one of the units, you can see their damage potential, you can see their armor resistance, and how they kind of prefer against different types of weapons. So for the example, when it comes to the Field Scout, you can see that they are really good at being able to absorb damage from rockets and cannons, but when it comes to everything else, so like rifles, fire, snipers, and explosives, they have no resistances whatsoever, so they are just pretty much going to get melted by those weapons. But if you blink and you miss it, you'll also notice that there's an extra line of text saying that when they get to low health, they will then reduce incoming damage by going prone. Uh, this does mean that they can get crushed by most, most vehicles, but that's just standard because they are treated as infantry. But the fact that they will go prone means that they'll have a little bit more longevity compared to some of the other units, just from the fact that they will just like start taking less damage coming their way while still maintaining their damage output. Now of course they're not the only infantry unit that does exist in this game, so we will start to see that we'll get a few more that will get the exact same kind of treatment, meaning that they will have ways of being able to be longevity, rather than it just being a case of summoning an army like I've noticed in previous Command Conquers, uh, just having an army purely made up of vehicles because of the speed, because of the amount of weaponry they bring with them, it does mean that infantry are able, able to stay within a fight for a longer period of time, so it may be a case that we start mixing up those armies and making a, a combination of both infantry as well as vehicles. Vehicles. So after scooting far down on the minimap, we will get an extra airdrop of another three soldiers, and these ones are going to be one of my favourites to exist in this game, and it's just a really refreshing take on the rocket soldiers, and these are going to be the drone operators. How these ones work is that they have no damage output by themselves, just as standard, uh, but they will be able to summon a drone that will fire rockets continually. On top of that, they do have a special ability, allowing you to manually take control of the drone, leaving the operator kind of stationary, meaning they can't do anything about it, uh, but it allows you to move the drone around the map and just out for, like pure safety and allows you to scout out the environment in front of you. Whether this is going to be balanced compared to the other factions version of the rocket launcher is yet to be seen because we haven't had access to grab hold of those units just yet, uh, but it is interesting to see that they are messing around with the standard formula, so rather than it being a case of a rocket soldier being able to take on a tank or something like that, we do have something a little bit more futuristic in being able to use a drone to be able to do that as well. 
So after scooting your way around a very small base, you will have access to a few more units, and this is going to be in the form of a couple of Sentinel vehicles, as well as a Riot Medic. How the Riot Medic will work is that it is a special unit, and I do mean that especially because we will get to see it a little bit later once we get access to a base. But how this one works is that it has very high armor, it's able to take a sustained amount of fire, and it's just there to keep your infantry units alive. It also has access to a special ability allowing it to place a beacon down and how this beacon works is there is a separate building that will do an AoE heal for all infantry units in the area. This will not do anything to vehicles so you'll notice that the sentinels cannot be healed in this game mode uh, so it is just going to be really good if you are able to make some like some little micromanagement with your units uh, you can always keep your infantry units topped up by using the riot medic. As for the Sentinel vehicles, the closest thing we're going to have comparison wise for this is going to be the Humvee from previous Command and Conquers. And how this one works is that it's really good at being able to take down personnel, but because of the type of gun it has on top of it, it means it's not going to be especially useful for taking out vehicles or being able to take out buildings. It too also comes with a special ability allowing it to swap the firing mode of the gun that's on top, allowing you to swap over to marking projectiles. How this one works is that what you'll do, you'll be able to mark attacked enemies and network units gain bonus range and damage against marked enemies and marked enemies generate intel when well killed. Intel is going to be your secondary kind of resource in this game. It allows you to be able to get access to certain units, it allows you to activate certain abilities, and on top of that, like I said, because it gets the networked ability, some units can get extra range on their attacks and increased amount of damage on enemies. This means that the Sentinel is going to be very useful in certain fights, meaning that you can use this to focus down a certain unit if you never need it in a pinch. Uh, so you can always have benefit from having at least one or two of these using marking projectiles so that the other units can benefit from their DPS. So we've already managed to see a decent chunk of the units available to the GDF but the fun doesn't stop here because a little bit further on we do get access to the Grenadier units. Now as we've seen in previous Commander Conquers the Grenadier units are going to be especially useful for kind of like close AoE damage as well as being able to take out buildings relatively quickly. Now as far as we can tell, these ones do not have a special ability, at least not at the time of the demo. I mean, that in terms of like intel, in terms of networked enemies or anything like that, the Grenadier is not going to get any kind of bonus whatsoever. But they definitely get the job done, especially if you can get them close enough especially to certain buildings, especially to defensive buildings, mean that you can start clearing out defenses so much easier with these units. They're also especially useful for being able to take out enemies that are bunched up close together, meaning that the grenades will be able to do that small AoE impact, meaning that we can take out multiple enemies at the same time. So overall pretty standard stuff and then it allows us to shift over to the base because we do get access to a limited amount of base building near the end of the demo. Double clicking your MCV brings up a grid allowing you to choose where you're going to be deploying your unit and then get started with your base building. This opens up a menu over on the right hand side allowing you to choose between going through your power plants, going through your refineries, to your silos, to your barracks and also to your satellite uplinks allowing you to progress further into the tech tree for bigger and stronger units. You'll also know that we do have separate tabs for buildings, defences and infantry and it also allows us to go further with vehicles and aerial when, but we don't get access to that in the demo. Now I must admit one of my favourite features that Tempest Rising is doing, one that isn't necessarily going to be brand new to the genre but is done especially well in this demo, is the fact that if you do produce several different barracks, it allows you to have separate queues for each of those and it can all be commanded on the right hand side allowing you to click back and forth between all the numbers of barracks that you do have. Each one of these can be set with a separate rally point, allowing you to be able to amass them all into one group ready for you to just select, or for you to start producing units in their separate groups and then be able to manage them out from there. Overall, this is fast, it's easy, it's clean, it's especially useful when we start making up your army, and once you have enough units, which you can see in the top right, you'll be able to then start amassing that army ready for you to push forward. Unfortunately, this is where one of my personal gripes does come in, because if you notice in the top right, you will see a population cap. Now, unfortunately, we don't know for certain if this is going to be in the full game, and we don't know if this is just purely for the demo, just to be able to manage expectations or to manage the amount of units that exist on the screen. The fact that it kind of exists, though, and it is on the screen, suggests to me that it will be in the full game. And while I understand that 200 units should be more than enough to be able to have a decent amount of army to push forward, and it's probably done for some kind of like coding reason for the amount of army that you could probably just make in of itself. I just don't personally like the idea in any kind of RTS game the fact that there is a population limit. I like the idea of being able to amass as big of an army as I want and then just go forward and be able to take down as many enemies that I want from there. 
Sometimes a base can have so many defenses that 200 is not going to be enough. I've dev case an example is going to be something like Age of Empires, where you will notoriously be able to have one attack, you will go through, raise a few of those buildings, and then you will be able to be finished off for you to then send in a second army from there. I understand it's done for pacing reasons, I understand the sentiment behind it, I'm just not personally a fan of it, but feel free to tell me I'm wrong down in the comment section. But anyway, I've digressed more than enough, so once you've taken a few of your units across the bridge and you've been able to take out most of the enemy units that exist there along with a couple of buildings, you will then have the support option menu opened up on the left hand side and your camera will be shifted across to the wall and the gate. What this will tell you to do is drop an airstrike on the gate in of itself, allowing you to be able to push forward and finish off the rest of the demo. So it is going to be a highlight to us that we are going to get some support powers in this game. Seems like how we had in something like Command Conquer 3 or Command Conquer Generals, we are going to have access to a few things depending on what the intel we have, depending on the amount of uh, like your currency that we do have as well. So we are going to get access to different abilities and I really enjoy that idea. I like the idea of being able to have that because it opens up a few more options, a few more strategies ready for your army to be able to push forward. But anyway, as soon as the airstrike comes in, as soon as you've pushed forward, you've taken out the vehicles, you've taken out all the buildings that exist there, you take out their MCV as well, that is then pretty much game over, and it's just enough of a taster to make you feel like you want to come back for more. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. Like I said, I, see, I can see a little bit of depth to this, something that goes a little bit further than what Commander Conquer does. And because of how much I enjoy Commander Conquer in of itself, I really like the idea that they're taking that kind of formula and just evolving it into something a little bit more, kind of like brought up to date, a little bit more strategical thinking rather than it just being a case of one unit can dominate all. But this does leave a couple of questions in my mind because while I do enjoy the taster of this, we haven't got to see all the buildings, we haven't got to see all the defences, we especially haven't seen all the vehicles and we definitely haven't seen any of the aerial units. Now my personal favourites that came from, for example, Commander Conquer was going to be something like the Mammoth Tank and I really enjoyed that kind of weaponry that existed on one single platform. So I'm kind of curious as to what Tempest Rising is going to bring in in place of what the Mammoth Tank can do from Command & Conquer, or is it going to go its own route and we're just going to get a few tanks here and there, and they're just going to separate it out across multiple vehicles. Either way, it's got me excited, I'm looking forward to what we can do and what this game is going to be bringing it, and hopefully it does come out before the end of the year. But that wraps it up on the demo, let me know your thoughts down below, have you tried it out for yourself, what do you think of Tempest Rising, and do you think it's going to be the new Command & Conquer going forward? Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. Massive thank you to the Babylonian family, as always, for their continued support. It really does help the channel out. But as I always say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on our next video.